present Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Leonard Williams, Danny Ross, and Diana Day in... The Kid Who Got the Bird. So you see, Alfie... I said to Grandad, don't worry, I'll have your new allotment dug over in no time, just leave it to me. So hurry up, Alfie, I want to get it finished before dark. Oh, I'm, I'm fed up, I'm knocking off for a bit. Oh, you don't need to stop work, Alfie, I'll be round with the tea trolley in a minute. Will you stop being, for you get me down here with some tale about fresh air and exercise, I've been digging for over an hour, I've got blisters on my back, lumbago in my hands, and that space nearly ruined my new pair of pinkle wickers. <laughs> I'm fed up. You can just do the digging yourself. I might as well, the speed you're doing it. Why do you keep tapping the ground with your spade before you dig? Well, I, I do that because I've... I've uh, no. No. I'm, I'm not telling you. you. You'll only laugh at me. <laughs> no, I won't. No, you, you, yes, you will. Yeah, I, I know you. Alfie, I promise I won't laugh. Now, go on. Why do you keep tapping the ground with your spade? To warn all the worms to get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Oh, I, I knew you'd laugh. You, you, you don't care if a poor little worm gets cut in half. Alfie, shut up. I can hear somebody coming. You what? Quick, give me the spade. It might be my granddad. D don't snatch. Thanks, Alfie. Here we go. Hello there, Jim. Oh, it's you, Mr Whittle. Well, now you're here, I might as well have a rest. Well, if you ask me, you've earned it. You were going at it just then like a bull in a Chinese junk shop. Well... I promised Grandad I'd have this lot dug over before dark. That's why I was busy. Well, you do a lot better with a bit of help. Alfie, just don't stand around like that, letting the young lad do all the work. Oh, I like that. Hey, so this is Jock's new dandelion patch. Well, he should do well with it, you know. That soil does look very futile. <laughs> hey, Jim, isn't that a hen house over there? Yes, that's right. Grandad's going to keep some hens because of the price of eggs. And if the price of something else goes up anymore, he'll probably start growing his own hops. <laughs> <laughs> Now, come on, Alfie, hold your hand out. But, Susan, look, I, I tell you, I'm all right. Look, now that blister's burst, it might have some dirt in it. Now, keep still while I put this iodine on. Ready? Susan, before you give him the iodine, hadn't you better give him something to make him numb so he won't feel the pain? Oh, listen, clever clogs, I don't need anything. You mean you, you're numb to start with? Yes, I am. Oh. <laughs> Susan, I'll clout him with me crash helmet, I will. Alfie, just ignore him. Now, for the last time, hold your hand out. You naughty boy. Hold your hand out. You Get naughty... out. Get out. Here, here, here. What's going on? It's all right, Mum. Susan and Alfie are having a row. Yes, and I'll bet I know who started it. Mr Harrison will think we're a pack of howling savages. Mr Harrison? Who's he? He's with Mr Craythorpe and Grandad in the front room. They're getting the allotment form signed. Oh, I want a word with Mr Craythorpe. Sinclair, Mr. Harrison here, in his capacity of park superintendent, takes a great deal of personal interest in the way the allotments are run. Hello, Grandad. Hello, Mr. Craythorpe. Mum said you were in here. Oh, James, there's someone here you might like to meet. This is the nice man who is responsible for your playground in the park. Oh, hello, mister. I didn't realise it was you, because you usually have a pin on a stick and a cap on. <laughs> I never knew you were bald-headed. I mean, ooh, uh... oh... Oh, I see we have a little joker here. Eh? Arr. Oh, arr. <laughs> arr, that be right, mister. I be all there with me mangle wurzled. <laughs> Jimmy. Jimmy, that'll do. Don't talk to Mr. Harrison like that. Why not? Oh, I'll bet he don't mind a little joke to his sir. <laughs> James, James, have you taken leave of your senses? Mr. Harrison is not amused. Not amused? He's having a little joke with me. Oh, you happen to come from the West Country, my lad. Cornish, I'm proud of it. Now, 
about getting these forms signed, Mr. Sinclair, you'd best read all the rules first. You see the clause about livestock attracting vermin? Eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm just reading it. Oh, honest, Mr. Harrison, I, I didn't mean to take the mickey. <laughs> no, no, James, I'm sure the park superintendent accepts your apologies for making fun of his accent. Well, it, it's easily done. I mean, look at Mr. Whittle's accent. Do you know, when we were coming home from Grandad's allotment just now, he said to me, Hey, Jim, me little whacker, is your old Grandad going to keep them white windy dots? <laughs> or them bluff Orpingtons? Jimmy... Will you please keep quiet while I'm reading? Sorry, Grandad. Uh, now, uh, just a moment, Sonny. What was that you were saying? It's Mr. Whittle's daft way of saying things. He wanted to know what sort of hens me Grandad was going to keep on his allotment. Hens? On his allotment? Ah! I mean, <laughs> yes. Ray Thorpe? You be a fine one to be working for the corporation. Uh, be I, sir? Uh, uh, am I? You know very well that hens ain't allowed to be kept on corporation allotments. Yeah, now, wait a minute. All it says on here is pigeons and rabbits. Ah, well, the new bylaw also mentions ends. Grey Sharp should have made sure it was included in the agreement form. But I've already got everything arranged. The hen house has been delivered and the hen's ordered for tomorrow. Well, what's wrong with a chap trying to write a few eggs for himself, eh? Ah, but what about the rats? Don't be daft, rats don't lay chucky eggs. <laughs> Now, I'm talking about the fact that hens attract rats. And there's been a lot of complaints. Graythorpe? Uh, yes, Mr. Harrison. You'll have these agreement forms altered to include the ban on hens. Do you understand? Uh, 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 yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, Good. I, I, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Sinclair. He'd better go before he gets a walking stick round his beachy head. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we'd better go. Uh, we let ourselves out, Mr. Sinclair. I do that. Uh, after you, Mr. Harrison. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sinclair. Good night to me. Uh, Grandad, uh, about the five bob you were going to give me for digging your allotment. You'll get no five bob from me, blabbermouth. I've made some tea for us all. Oh, have they gone? Ah, uh, they've gone. How do you sound upset? What's the matter? Well, I bought a hen house and ordered the birds, and now I can't keep them. Thanks to that young scamp and that twit, Crathor. Jimmy, what have you been doing? I didn't know, ma'am. I only repeated something that daft Mr. Whittle said to me. Hello then, what's this then, Jim? Casting nasturtiums on your old pal. Oh, hello, Mr. Whittle. Hiya, Pat. Pete, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to bust in like this, but I saw Craythorpe and the park skeezer leaving, and from what I could gather, they was having a bit of an alteration. Is there anything wrong? Yes, Mr. Whittle, Grandad Zens have landed him right in the chicken soup. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jim, I don't get your drift. According to that form, if I keep hens in my allotment, I, I could be prosecuted. Have you got these hens laid on? Aye, ah, I've ordered them. They're to be paid for and collected tomorrow. Hey, Pete, in recognition of the friendship you have shown towards me and me old dad, I would like to say this. I now declare the Mersey Tunnel open. <laughs> I now... Hey, now turn it up, Jim. What, now, what I want to say is this, Jim. We'll keep your hens in our backyard. Well, that's very kind of you to offer, Whittle. Oh, think nothing of it, Pete. I can be very philharmonic when I want. <laughs> uh, Mr. Whittle, I appreciate the gesture, but I really don't fancy the idea of hens living right next door. I mean, wouldn't they attract rats and mice? No, oh, not with my old tabby cat out on the prowl. Is he a good moser, then? The other night, when Mr. Whittle was out, I was in there with a the cat and his dad, and he sat in front of a mouse hole for three whole hours. Who? The cat? No, his dad. <laughs> and when he saw the mouse's nose peeping out, he didn't half lick his whiskers. His dad? No, the cat. <laughs> Suddenly, he sprang with a crash, and he went up the wall. The cat? No, his dad. <laughs> The cat knocked his beer over. <laughs> Father, for the last time, I'm not letting you go for those hens in your condition. But they've got to be paid for and collected this morning. Look, I'll wrap up well, and I won't be away more than... <laughs> <sighs> those hens can wait. Oh, it's a pity Mr. Whittle's working all day. He could have gone and got them for you. But, Pat, the man said he wants them off his hands today, so they've got to be... Uh, 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 oh. Here you are, Grandad. 
A hot drink. Susan's made it, so it'll probably make you sick. <laughs> if that doesn't, Mr. Craythorpe's arrived. Uh, see you later, Susan. Oh, hello, Mrs. Clitheroe. Mr. Sinclair. Uh, is something amiss with you? Hello, Theodore. I'm afraid Father isn't very well. Look, will you stop molly coddling me? It's only a. Uh, <laughs> 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 Bless you. Uh, oh, Mr. Sinclair. <laughs> Have you got a cold? No, he's been taking snuff with a bicycle pump. <laughs> Stop it, Jimmy. Father, I'm going to ring Mr. Arkwright, the poultry man, and tell him you're not coming for the hens today. Oh, hens? Oh, but, Mr. Sinclair, I've brought the amended forms round. You can't keep hens. Oh, it's all right. Mr. Whittle's going to keep them in his backyard. Really? Look, Father, let's forget about the hens. Uh, perhaps I could collect them in my car. It'll be no trouble, I assure you. After all, the hens will be in crates, so they can be loaded on the back seat. Oh, no, 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 I no, couldn't... No. Uh, Please, uh, uh, Mr. Sinclair, allow me to do this one small thing for you. Oh, well, all right, Theodore. It'll be a load off my mind, and you're very kind. Oh, and here's the five pounds. You'll need to pay for them. Oh, thank you. Now leave everything to me, and don't worry. Mum, can I go with Mr. Craythorpe? Well, I uh, don't see why not. As long as you behave yourself. Oh, I'll see he does that. Well, James, we'd better be on our way. Right, Mr. Craythorpe. <laughs> Now, remember, Bert, when Mr. Arkwright comes out, keep quiet and let me chat him. Right, old Charlie. Now, listen, you've got the right sack there, haven't you? The one with the cross on. Oh, yes, the others are still in fun. Good. Come on, Arkwright, wake up. Charlie, I, I still don't understand. How can we buy this chicken feed at a pound a sack, sell it for 15 bob and still make money? Bert, do me a favour, stop thinking. Look, how many sacks did we buy? Three. Well, that's three quid we paid out. How many are we going to sell out, right? Uh, Twelve. At 15 bob, that's nine quid. Profit, six quid. Oh, oh I see now. <laughs> hey, Charlie, how can we sell 12? 12 sacks when we only bought three. Because the sample one with a cross on is full of end food. The others have end food on top and gravel underneath. Very good for hardening the eggshells, gravel. I say, it's no use knocking like that. Arkwright can't hear you. Why, is he deaf? No, he's gone to Liverpool. <laughs> That's all I needed, a comical yokel. Here, won't he be coming back to feed his hens then? No, he fed them at seven o'clock this morning. Seven in the morning? What a time to wake up the poor birds. <laughs> It's a wonder the perishers don't go on strike. <laughs> Here, careful, son. You might do yourself an injury. It wasn't that funny. Well, I, I was imagining all the ends shouting, Come on, girls, let's all stand up and ban the egg. <laughs> Bert, my love, when you were born, the stork who brought you should have been arrested for carrying dope. Here, I say, mister, do you want to buy some end food cheap? No, thanks. I should call and see Arkwright tomorrow. Well, thank you very much for nothing. Here, Bert, we've got to find a mug and get a few quid. I'm desperate. Well, if we can't, we'll have to get some sort of a job. I'm not that desperate. <laughs> Come on, let's get the sack back in the van. All right. <laughs> get up there! I think I'm the donkey. <laughs> Oops, a daisy! <sighs> Hello, hello, hello. There's a likely-looking mug. Who, the bloke with the kid? Yeah, with the spectacles and the vacant look. Here. <laughs> Do you know something? <laughs> he reminds me of a geezer I once sold the Tower of London to. <laughs> Here. They're going to Arkwright's door. Uh, this is Mr. Arkwright's place, James. <laughs> Thank goodness. Mr. Craythorpe, when are you going to get rid of that old wreck of yours and buy a car? What do you mean, old wreck? It's only eight years old. Well, it must have worried a lot. <laughs> Never mind my car, James. Let's just collect the hens and cut out the comedy. Well, you'd better keep blowing your horn all the way home. Blow my horn? Why? To keep the hens flying about. If twelve of them settle all at once on your back seat, it'll collapse. That will do. Uh, there seems to be no answer. 
James, go round the back and see if Mr. Arkwright is there. Right, Mr. Craythorpe. But I still think it'd be safer to take the pens in two trips. Excuse me, sir. Are you thinking of buying some ends? Uh, yes, uh, from Mr. Arkwright. Oh, that's a pity. That's Why? too bad. Why, what do you mean? Well, we was just talking to him. Weren't we, Bert? Uh, oh, Mr. Arkwright. Oh, yes, he's in Liverpool. <laughs> How me ankle. We was talking to him uh, on the telephony. Yes, he's gone to see the health inspector. All his birds are sick. Aren't they, Bert? Oh, that's right. His ends have got foot and mouth. Is it? Oh! <laughs> Foul pest they've got. Foul pest! It's a pity. A great pity. Oh, dear. That, that's most awkward. Yeah. It's a great blow to us. Uh, Isn't we... it, Bert? Uh, yes. Uh, well, you wanted to buy some hens. Well, no. We was going to sell him some turkeys. Uh, what? Sell him turkeys? Yeah, well, we have a big farm, you see, and we sell all our stock to Arkwright, and he sells it to the shops. Don't we, Bert? Yes, we have 12 sacks. Oh! Why don't you try the other leg? Now, Bert means we've got 12 gross of turkeys. Well, now, of course, we've got them on our hands. There's nobody oh. around there, Mr. Craythorpe. No, Mr. Arkwright is away. But it wouldn't make any difference. The hens aren't fit. Fit? You don't want them to fight. You've just got to sit down and lay eggs. Look at old Mr. Blenkinsop. He can hardly walk, but he still does his job. Don't be ridiculous. Mr. Blenkinsop isn't a hen laying eggs. No, he's a bricklayer laying bricks. <laughs> now, look. You don't want hens. What you want is turkeys. Turkeys? Yeah. And since I like the look of you, you're a very pretty lad. I'll let you some of my prize turkeys at ten bob each. You've only got to keep them till next week, and you might get two quid apiece. Oh, no, no. I'm not a middleman. I'm sorry you can talk all day, but I will not buy and sell turkeys. Of all the stupid incumbent, idiotic, bumbling fools, I've never known you. Oh, you're the worst. I think Grandad's annoyed with you, Mr. Craythorpe. I'm talking to both of you. Father, control yourself. It's bad enough Mr. Whittle sitting there hearing you without letting the whole street know. What am I supposed to do? Kiss them both on the cheek? And I'm very sorry if you think I've done wrong, Mr. Sinclair. Yes, Grandad, and I'm sorry Mr. Craythorpe did wrong. Do you try and regulate it, my lad? Oh, Father, please. Now, now, Jock, don't get your tonsils in a tangle. <laughs> you want to say things calmly at your age. Leave my age out of this. No offence, Pete, but I don't think there's anything wrong with this turkey idea. No, it wasn't your five pounds. Well, I'm no big business typhoon, but <laughs> I'm willing to take half of them turkeys off your hands. You are? And I'll take the other half. <laughs> you are, Father, so it's cost you nothing. Well, I... I... Hey. Well, just a minute. You're sure he'll deliver those turkeys, Craythorpe? Of course. I took his name, the number of his van, saw his driving licence, and said, if he didn't deliver 20 turkeys tomorrow, I would have the police on him. I see. Ten bob each, eh? Oh, well, maybe I was a wee bit hasty, Theodore. And they say women keep changing their minds, Father. You're the limit. Oh, Father, I didn't quite realise. How much you'd make on them? <laughs> exactly. But no, 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 I, I mean... Uh, you mean you approve of the idea? Yes, Mr. Whittle was going to help with the hens. So, Harry, you can come in on the turkeys. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> and you, Theodore. Oh, that's very kind of you, Mr. Sinclair. And we'll share the profits. Between the four of us. <laughs> oh, you want the same share as us three? Yes, the same share will do. I don't want to be greedy. <laughs> Even if I did think of the whole idea. <laughs> How much longer are we going to be collecting orders for your blinking turkeys? I told Susan that would only be half an hour. Higginbottoms is the last house. I want one more order for a turkey and then you can get back to sparrow legs. Yeah, well, if Higginbottom doesn't buy one, you've had it. You're wasting no more of my time. I like that. I sold one in two minutes to Beaky Billington and then you spend half an hour apologising for insulting her. Well, that was your fault, talking about it before we knocked at the door. Calling a bird conk and pretty Polly and all that. <laughs> that was no excuse for you asking her, do you want to buy a parrot, Mrs Turkey? <laughs> and then getting all excited and babbling about, we give her the sage and onions to stuff in her nose. Oh. <laughs> 
Well, it were you laughing. All right, we're here now, so leave Mr Higginbottom to me. Don't worry, I will. I don't want him getting annoyed with me. He's six foot four. Don't be frightened of him. Grandad says he's all talk. Just a big yapper. Hello? What's this? Hello, Mr Higginbottom. Hello, big mouth. Get Mr Yapper. Get Higginbottom. What did you say? Oh, he wasn't talking to you, Mr Higginbottom. No, no, I, 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 I was talking to myself. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm... All right, all right. Look, Clitheroe, if you've called round for our house, you've had it. He's in bed. Why, is he sick? No, I am. <laughs> I'm sick of him and his blooming animals. Frogs, beetles, mice, the house is overrun with them. Why don't you try that powder they advertise on the telly? Don't you try and be clever with me. <coughs> Mr Higginbottom means the pets, as he has. Pets? We sat down to a meal half an hour ago, and halfway through a frog jumped out of Ozzy's pocket... Right into me blank man. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't funny. <laughs> no, I was just thinking it's been in his pocket since yesterday. And it only came out now. Since yesterday? Yes, when his blazer was hanging up, I slipped it higher. I, I, <laughs> I saw it slip in. Look. Look, before you say any more, you'd better clear off, both of you. Yeah, hey, wait, wait a minute. Well, we haven't told you why we've come. I don't care. Ozzy's not coming out. And anyway, what do you want to be playing with kids for? I haven't come here to play with kids. No? No, I've come here to play with you. What? <laughs> I, I mean, I've, I've come to see you. To see me? About a bird. A bird. <laughs> Keep your voice down. The wife's in the front room. <laughs> Bottom, would you like to buy a turkey cheap? A turkey? Yes, only 30 bob. Hello. Have they been letting your grandfather draw the pub raffle again? <laughs> that isn't a very nice thing to say, Mr. Higginbottom. I was being funny. Have you no sense of humour? Of course, Alfie, you should have laughed. Everybody else laughs at Mr. Higginbottom. That's right. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, only yesterday my granddad said Higginbottom is the laughing stock of the rose and cow. Get out of it! Ah! Do you want another sherry, Pat? <laughs> no, his father. Or I can see myself snoozing this afternoon instead of ironing. Well, it'll do you no harm to have a rest, Pat. You're far too industrial. <laughs> <laughs> no, you won't change her mind, Harry. How about you, Susan, Alfie? No, thank you. Oh, not for me. Drink always goes straight to me head. Well, there's plenty of room for it there. <laughs> now, this is a friendly celebration. Let's keep it like that. Well, we've got orders for every turkey but one. And if he'd kept out of it, I'd have sold that to Mr Higginbottom. Now, now, James, we've done very well. I've got ten orders from the Women's Guild, and you got five. Yes, and our four families have turkeys for nothing, and you've shown a handsome profit. Aye, when Theodore pays the other five pounds, we'll still have made twelve pounds ten. Yes, I think we ought to drink the health of Theodore and Jimmy. You've just finished drinking it. Alfie, come on, you and I better go or we'll be late. Yeah, that's all. Then thanks for the drinks. ta -da, everybody. <laughs> well, if your glass is empty, Harry... How about another wee drop of whiskey? Well, I don't want to overdo it, Pete. I've had two already. You've had three, but who's counting? <laughs> Jimmy, will you behave yourself? Mr. Craythorpe, the man is here with the turkeys. Oh, good. He's arrived. Well, we'd better go round to the back and see them safely into your garden. Right, Pete, I'm with you. <laughs> well, come on, James. Isn't it exciting, Mr. Craythorpe? <laughs> ah, there he is, unloading the first crate from the van. Come along. Hello, hello, hello. Well, here I am with your first, second and thirds. I beg your pardon? First, second and thirds. The birds. Oh, oh I see. That's uh, Cockney rhyming slang, isn't it? That's right, mate. Mm. Well, come on, let's get him out. Yeah, uh, just a minute. There's a little matter of the Lady Godiva. Uh, Lady Godiva? The fiver. Oh, oh yes, of course. Uh, the five pounds. <laughs> he's, uh, he's not with you, mister. He's a bit boil and pimple. He's what? A bit simple. Yeah, he looks a bit of a tarry rope. 
kind of what? A dope. How dare you, James? He said it. Look, give the man the money. Oh, very well. Here's your Lady Chatterley. Uh, your lady... <laughs> Here's your five pounds. Will you please unload the other crates? But what other crates? They're all in that one. Now, just a moment. We paid for 20 turkeys, and that is what we want. That's what you got. In that crate, 20 live healthy turkeys, all three days old. You what? <laughs> you scoundrel, you've tricked us. You never mentioned how old they were. Yeah, wait a minute. They're end turkeys. And you know, no gentleman ever gives away a lady's age. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Craythorpe, your great big bottle and jug. Bottle and mug! <laughs> You're to blame as well. When Mr. Whittle and your grandfather find out, what can I say? Your prayers. <laughs> I'm off. I'll see you at Easter. No, James. We've got to face them and take our medicine. You can take your medicine. Me, I'm going to take a powder. <laughs> Those involved with the Clitheroe Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Leonard Williams as both Theodore Craythorpe and Harry Whittle, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, and Diana Day as Susan. Also appearing were Harry Taub, Basil Jones, Tony Melody, and Brian Truman. The recorded program, written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, was produced by James Casey and starred Jimmy Clitheroe as the kid himself. The Cliveroe Kid was recorded by the BBC.